Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to look at a project that was sent to a customer. Uh, this is an open baffle using 15 inch woofers and it is project number 1549. So uh, this project is used with the horns that I had done earlier, uh, these large front horns. And so the customer needed a base solution and was uh, keen on going with the open baffle. Uh, the customer had commissioned Kaizen Acoustics out of Japan to custom build uh, some 15 inch field coil drivers. However, um, I used uh, for my testing these um, SB Audience Bianco 15 OB 350 drivers. So these 15 inch drivers, uh, they, they use a, a steel frame basket, ceramic magnet, uh, they're relatively affordable and so they're specifically designed for open baffle with a uh, high QTS I believe of around 0.56 and so uh, these are a new offering from SB audience and so I was keen to try them uh, with open baffle and so what better way than to test them with these uh, custom open baffles that I designed and so with the overall design, I was trying to go for the same kind of black frame uh, that's made with uh, stained oak along with the uh, uh, solid beech hardwood. So the, the baffle is constructed of about uh, three quarter inch, um, about uh, 20 centimeter, two centimeters thick uh, beech along with uh, another 24 millimeter thick Baltic birch plywood. Uh, so pretty, pretty substantial thickness there and then combined with the oak frame which was uh, another five centimeters thick so um, the the base was CNC machined as one piece of oak and that's also five centimeters thick um, not including the feet and so the total thickness there was uh, 10 centimeters thick of hardwood to really kind of provide a, a foundation there for the, the open baffle. Uh, the customer was using the ISO Acoustics uh, Gaia 3 uh, feet on these, um, but for my testing, I just used regular, uh, really hard rubber uh, feet. So um, I decided that to get the best measurements, uh, I really need to take these outside. Uh, and so that's what I did is I uh, conducted my measurements outside and so you can see here my test set up there was uh, some wind so I had to set up a barrier to block the microphone from the wind okay so um, looking at the outdoor measurements with the BNC or the SB audience uh, woofer you can see here this is the resulting response and so I'm not using any gating uh, here and so we're seeing uh, good output actually to around 40 uh, maybe 38 Hertz where it where it drops off rather quickly and then there's this uh, broad Q hump at around 150 Hertz uh, so the natural response of the driver and then there is some breakup you can see here happening at around 1.3 kilohertz um, so uh, burst decay looks really good and step response actually has quite a quite a steep initial rise which is good and uh, distortion was the real surprise here and so I did a multi-tone test from 50 Hertz all the way up to uh, 3 kilohertz and so uh, using my SM58 dynamic microphone um, I was actually getting uh, distortion at minus 50 dB um, see here actually it's minus 60 db at 100 hertz so 0.1 percent intermodulation distortion at 100 hertz so that's that's a record for low distortion base um, and this was at a test spl uh, of 90 db at one meter um, so and, and an excellent result there so moving uh, this the open baffles indoors I set up a stereo pair of the open baffles and conducted a measurement um, at the listening position two meters away and this is the result that I got and so you can really see the the effects of the room coming into play with uh, resident room uh, modes and that so um, so 
really this is with a one uh, six db octave smoothing um, if you take it a, take it to the to the max and apply a one to one octave smoothing that produces the the following result so kind of just gives you a general idea of the trend uh, that we're seeing here and so we are getting bass extension to 50 hertz with this open baffle um, now I did integrate it into a finished system just for my evaluation purposes and so you can see it here I was using the ES600 by radio horns with the Fostex uh, T96A um, I was using the SB acoustics uh, 65 CDNT compression drivers on this so I was using a 800 Hertz crossover point uh, second order crossover with the 15 inch and so what I found uh, was that the these particular 15 inch woofers have no problem uh, playing up to 800 Hertz even up to 1 kilohertz um, you can tell by uh, the intermodulation distortion here that by about one kilohertz we're starting to see things rise a little bit and that's where I found subjectively that the driver was starting to uh, sound a little bit uh, less uh, uh, detailed or clear um, so um, the overall presentation of these open baffles it was it was large and in charge so they're they were very entertaining uh, you just wanted to turn the volume up higher and higher. I actually found that my, I, I'm, uh, for the test at least, I was using uh, Yamaha Advantage uh, surround sound receiver, which is probably around 130 watts per channel. And I was finding that there was uh, s some clipping distortion at my listening level. And so I swapped out that for a higher power amplifier that was you know a good solid 200 watts and um, things things took it to another level being able to uh, play it much louder <laughs> and uh, um, you know you always have those listening sessions where you just want to crank it and you're listening to some some of your favorite songs and that was what I was doing here um, listening to some concert albums and live live recorded concerts and um, definitely uh, the entertainment value is there. Um, I did sense that there was a lack of deeper bass, so obviously you can see by the test results that we weren't getting much below 50 hertz. Um, but was I, what I was getting um, was from my measurements as well in the in the 100 150 hertz region there was tremendous uh impact and dynamics especially with kick drum and uh percussion instruments it just had this you know certainly this palpable uh presence to the sound that was extremely fast extremely dynamic and uh so i th i couldn't help but think when i was listening to this that this it needed a subwoofer uh, to take it to the next level that it was um, you know very very promising uh, what I was hearing um, so it, it I would consider it on par uh, with the uh, mid 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 bass front horns that I offer um, same level of transparency and dynamics uh, but in an open baffle solution so obviously uh, not everybody can accommodate giant baffles in their home um, but this is certainly a solution that, that you might want to consider the other aspect as well um, if you look at the sensitivity when we factor in the actual room gain so this is uh, my measurements with a stereo pair you're actually getting really high sensitivity uh, for those that have low power tube amps um, this is definitely a, a, a route that you could potentially take to to uh, bring the most out of your low power uh, tube amplifiers so uh, there you have it very interesting result um, I think I'm certainly going to be looking at using the SB audience uh, in future projects um, for either open baffle or rye pole uh, solutions. Um, this certainly has the low distortion that I'm looking for. There's certainly no issue there. Um, it has a decent amount of X Max as well, so it has good output capability and it's uh, reasonably affordable. So why not go with four of them per side or eight of them? You know what I mean? Like uh, scale up. Um, yeah, so uh, interesting offering that they would come out with a, a open baffle specific driver at an affordable price. So, um, yep, there you have it. Take care. Have a great day.